Good morning. Hello. 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 Happy Wednesday. Today I am going to do a quick rundown and overview of some things that can add that you can add to your lecture notes that are really going to help you with understanding the information, retaining the information. They are even some things that you might want to do that will make it more fun and more interesting to actually study. So that is always helpful. And that's what we're going to jump into today. There are 10 of them that we're going to go through. Um, we will go through them pretty quickly because I want to keep it moving along. And they are going to hopefully help you to add a little bit of color to your study session. But first, I'm Terrell and this is Absolutely Studying. I bootstrap my way through university while juggling a full-time job and a family. It was tough, but now I want to pay it forward. I want to supply you with all of the resources and support you need to flourish in your academic career. So today we are jumping into 10 things that you can add to your lecture notes that are going to really help you with clarification. It'll boost your understanding. It will help you to make your study sessions a little bit more entertaining because you may not be doing this already. So it's something new that you can do. Maybe you can go back through some of your old Alexa notes and insert some of these items. And then that is something that is new and fresh and entertaining and fun. And you can do that instead of, you know, the regular, the regular debacle that you, that is normally just reading and writing down notes that you are probably just so tired of. We will also chat just a little bit about my study skills course because we go into a bunch of stuff like this in my study skills course. And that that will be the day. You know, nice, a nice, a nice light Wednesday afternoon. So what am I talking about when I say things to add to your notes, because your notes are just full of inter information. Some of you, you may have either used the Cornell method or possibly the, the outline method or possibly the Cornell method. And these are things that you can actually add to the notes that you've already had just to bulk them up and make them a little bit more interesting. Notes are really boring. Like it's really boring to sit there and write them in class unless you're really, really interested in the class material. But even then, there's a lot of time where some classes are just boring or it's really hard and it's hard to focus and it's hard to stay on topic and really, really get in there and know the information in real time. And if the lecture is boring or it just goes over your head, then it's not really going to inspire you to then go home and dive into the information again. So I hope you have a nice, something nice to drink. I just have iced tea today, but I'm so dehydrated that I, I, I'm gonna need to keep it closed. So if you don't already have something, you know, grab it, grab it, come back, like run. So, oh. The next thing is that they're often taken by hand and they can be get really, really sloppy. So one of the things I'm always saying is leave a ton of room, like leave lots and lots of room. And so next time going forward, when you are taking notes tomorrow, for example, leave extra room for maybe some of these little activities and we'll go through them now. So the very first thing is diagrams. Draw diagrams whenever possible. And I don't just mean the diagrams from the textbook or even the diagrams that the professor or the instructor draw on the board or in their slides. Obviously, those ones are great. But draw whatever diagrams feel right to you. I am a very visual learner, and sometimes I will visualize information in an image draw that image down. Like if something that you are hearing sparks a particular image in your mind, doodle that. That is going to add a lot of context and reference when you go back and study later. Maybe it doesn't make complete sense to you right now while you're trying to figure it out, but it, it eventually will. Or even that, that spark 
is going to help you to recall the context later because that image is just what your brain associates that piece of information with. And so it's a nice little mental association trick. The next one is textbook notes. You do need to read your textbook. You do need to copy all that information and bring it down. I have an entire reading um, strategy that I actually draw, dive into deep. You can find some, some articles on it on the website, but I do dive into it really deep in the study skills course. And we actually sit down and create one together. Well, we, it's a digital course. So there are digital units, but it is on your own time. So you can sit down and spend as much or as little time as you want creating this plan. And I am always available to assist. We have meetings and live streams and stuff like that to help you assist with any questions. So that is that. But there are there is a an in-depth exercise to create a reading strategy for yourself. And I share my complete reading strategy in the course. So there are several steps to that, but it does culminate in actually writing notes. So adding those textbook notes in with your class lecture notes and vice versa are really going to help to bulk up the information and add details where they might be lacking because your textbook goes into a lot of detail, whereas the lecture might not. And sometimes those deeper layers of information and understanding help to bolster and cement what it is that you need to know about the topic into your memory. So going through and reading the textbook and adding those notes into your lecture notes is really helpful, especially if you're not already doing it. Also, consolidating your textbook notes and your lecture notes together helps you to dive deeper into some topics and cut out duplicate information so that you just have one set of notes to reference rather than the two. Now, another place that is another uh, source of notes that's really good to add to your lecture notes are your lab and tutorial notes. So if you have labs and tutorials, then actually reference what you learned there into your course material wherever possible. So you might not necessarily learn the identical information in the lab and the lecture, for example. So, for example, in some of the science classes, in the lecture, you'll learn more about the, um, like the living conditions of an animal, but in the lab, you learn more about the physiological characteristics of the animal. But those two are related. If you have overlapping information, like maybe they have this physiological condition so that they can be better adapted to this location, then that's really important to throw and and and, and share between the two notes. So you can take the notes that you learn in lab and lecture and synthesize them into relevant parts of your lecture notes. Another important thing to do with your lecture notes is to rephrase complex ideas in your own words. So you're always hearing about when you are doing your lecture notes to summarize and put it in your own words. Don't write down or don't type down what the teacher says verbatim. Always summarize it and put it in your own words. Well, sometimes it's really hard to do that in real time. It's hard for everyone. And sometimes when you can take a step away from the lecture, take some time between it, and then actually sit down and read over it. You will have the time and the and the space to step away for a second and you can make better versions of what you were planning to say. So you can take that complex idea and you can rephrase it better than you did initially when you were under the pressure of having to get the information down. So sitting down and going through your notes and taking anything that is really complicated, that uses big words and just 
rephrase it and summarize it so that it's so simple a five-year-old could understand it. Another great place to rephrase and uh, complex ideas is for terminology. Instead of writing terminology down verbatim every single time, when you have time, go through and actually try and put it in your own words or try and simplify it and explain what it means or break down the big words inside the definition of the terminology and, and just say it in plain English. That is a really great way to make sure that you understand it well enough to explain to somebody else. Dehydration. Another, the next thing that I want to chat about adding would be comparison charts. So I use the word comparison charts a lot, but another word for them would be tables. If you have a table and on that table you compared to similar or dissimilar, so two items that are alike or two items that were really, really different and show where they are alike and where they are different. And that gives you a nice map of the information that you can quickly see, that you can quickly interpret. And it allows you to sort through the information and actually do something with that. It is another really, really good exercise. Because then, again, you are working with the information. You're getting to use it a little bit more. You're getting to use it in a little bit more of a non-traditional way. And that is going to help you with recall and creating more mental associations. So these tips and more are all in my study skills digital course. In the study skills digital course, this one teaches you all of the essentials of studying. It teaches you how to get organized for school. It teaches you how to take notes in class. It tells you how to take notes from your textbook and creates a whole reading strategy. It helps you to figure out how to get caught up if you are behind and how to best approach your professors if you have questions. This whole uh, there, there's a whole slew of information. There are a ton of units. It's a full course. If you were to do this one-on-one -on -one with a study strategist or an academic counselor, you would easily spend about six months in a program. This program I am doing completely digital. So it is completely on your own time. You don't have to have the tutor or the academic counselor breathing down your neck. You do it on your own time, at your own pace, all digital, and we will just meet. I am available for questions. And so that way I want to be able to really open the doors and make it more available to students who cannot afford either time-wise or monetary-wise, cannot afford to have a full-time tutor or can't afford to have a full-time academic counselor who is just sitting there teaching them study strategies. So I want that to be more accessible because there are so many students who are just not confident in their study skills. They don't feel like they have the study skills to really do well, and that can really impact your performance in school, and it can impact your confidence and how well you're going to go to you're going to do in school. And those are two things that you really want to be able to have a lot of: the confidence in yourself to do well, and the confidence to know that what you are studying is going to pay off. How you are studying is going to pay off. I remember going back to university and I would just sit there and spin my wheels because I was so afraid that what I was doing was not actually studying and was not going to help me anymore. And so I went through a whole slew of tutoring and a whole slew of research and trying to figure out the best study, st study strategies. And I was also working full time. I had a son at the time. And so time was not on my side. I needed to make some really, really efficient decisions in how I spent my time. And I needed those choices to really pay off. So these, a lot of these are ways that I worked out. There are a lot of things that uh, there are a lot of ways that I teach my students and help my students to excel. And now I want to blast open the doors to this program and really offer it to as many people as possible. I want it to be able to be accessible and I want it to be a place, a, a, a situation where people no longer have to be 
self-confident or nervous about their ability to study and have confidence in their study skills. It's so important to be able to have confidence in your study skills and have confidence in your ability to not only pass a course, but excel in it. People have dreams and they have goals and you want to be able to reach those goals. But how do you reach them when you don't have the fundamentals, when you don't have the foundation or the belief to know that you can do it. And that's what this course does. So that is my study skills course. There is a link down in the description. Definitely head down there and check it out, get some more information. And I will see you on the other side. Now, while I do have you, let's get into the rest of these study activities that you can add to your notes. So Hot off the hot off the tail of the of the comparison charts are concept maps. And this is something I love doing. I love just sitting there and doing a whole brain dump, either a concept map or a mind map of all of my all of the information that I know on a topic. So concept maps and my maps are a little bit different. And I'm going to quickly try and explain the difference between the two terms. I think I have to sneeze. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So let's start with a concept map because that is usually the place where people get confused. So a concept map is similar to a mind map, but it's got a top down approach. So Think of a family tree. So with a concept map, you're going to have the big central idea up here on the top. That's kind of the, 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 the head of the snake. That is the anchor. And then from there, you start breaking down into more and more tiers as you grow into more and more details. So you start out with a big idea and then you break it down into a handful of smaller, smaller details. And then each of those details, you would go down and break those individually down into the smallest details possible. So let me give you an example. Say we are talking about the cardiovascular system. So that is the big, big chunk at the very top. So now let's break that up into parts. Well, there's the heart, that's part of the cardiovascular system. You could argue that the lungs are also there. Then there is the venous system. And then there's the arteries. So let's just say that those are the four, the four supporting terms. Those are the four details. Those are the four kind of branches of the cardiovascular system. And then you go down further. So your heart, you can talk about the, you can then start filling out information on the muscles of the heart, maybe the valves of the heart, maybe the route that blood takes through the heart. Maybe you want to talk about the innervation of the heart. And you're just going down and you're making more and more and more and more information until it gets super, super, super specific and detailed. Same with the, oh, and then there's also the blood, right? So you can go blood and then you can start breaking it down into the components. Then you can start breaking it down into where it goes. And, and there's, so you start with the big topic, you break it down into smaller details. And then each time you, you break it down a little bit and then break it down a little more and more and more until you end up with a whole web. And it looks like a family tree almost of information. A mind map is a center out approach. So, and that one you can reach across and, 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 and get messy. So now instead of at the top, the cardiovascular system goes in the middle. And so then you can put like the organs, the transport system, anything, and you just write down everything you can think of. And then you just link everything to each other across the board. That's a mind map. So a mind map is a, like a splatter, a center out approach, whereas a concept map is a top down. So there's, two things that you can do with either one of these tools. You can actually create one from the notes in your book, or you can use it as a testing tool. So you can sit down, clear off your desk, and just write down absolutely everything you can think of. Both are really fun. Both are super useful. And the linking method, the linking manner of both of them really allows you to help 
each piece of information trigger more information so you can really test that web of knowledge that you have in all those mental associations. So that one's kind of like a two for one approach. You can also do summary paragraphs. So summary paragraphs are a little bit different than summarizing in your own words because of the level of information. So summarizing and, and, and putting information in your own words, especially if you use something like the outline method, would be rephrasing a fact like the heart, lungs, venous system, and arteries all belong to the cardiovascular system. Whereas a summary paragraph would be more than, or, or the cardiovascular, let's say the car, let's, let's make it a little bit simpler. The cardiovascular system is the system that pumps blood and oxygen throughout your body, or blood, oxygen, and nutrients throughout your bloody body. Whereas a summary paragraph would go in more depth. So that is taking an entire page of notes and summarizing them into one paragraph. So if it was about the cardiovascular system, maybe you were still doing the cardiovascular system pumps blood and oxygen and nutrients around your body. The heart is the pump. The arteries transport uh, the blood away from the, the, the heart. The vein the system pumps or brings blood back to the heart. The, uh, like the lungs. So you would write a whole paragraph about how in depth, everything on that page, and then just put a paragraph about that that summarizes everything in the, on the whole page and ties it all together. Whereas rephrasing in your own words just does the one line at a time. So that's and that's and that's really helpful, people. That way, if you are doing a quick study session, instead of going through all of your notes, you can just read one paragraph and get everything from that page just off of that one little blurb on the paragraph. Another uh, fun thing to add to your notes is just to expand the vocabulary and terminology. So I actually do a handful of things with my vocabulary and terminology. I take my, I liked to take my notes in the outline method. That was my preferred method of taking notes. And I discuss why actually in my course. But I actually did more with the vocabulary and terminology. So my terminology would be in the outline method notes, but then I would also make another set of notes that was strictly terminology. And then I would also make flashcards with just with terminology on it. So there's so many different things you can do with your vocabulary and terminology words. And even going through and defining not only the words of the course, but any words that you just in general, have trouble with. So that's really helpful with, um, for, for using terminology. And again, it's something else to do rather than just reading your textbook and writing out notes. Now, hand in hand with the terminology is something else that I would do. And I had a color coding system so that all of the information in my notes were color coded. And I don't mean every single word was highlighted. You still only highlight what's important. But I had a color coding system throughout all of my notes. And that was a nice study session because I would have my nice clean notes. I would, or in my textbook, I would have my nice clean textbook. And then I would highlight according to my color coding system. So that was also nice because, again, it's not a situation of reading and writing notes. I can split up my reading then. So sometimes I'm reading and highlighting, and sometimes I'm going back and reviewing and writing notes, or sometimes I've done my notes and I'm just reading my notes and highlighting those. It's giving you intention to what you're doing, especially a reading activity. So it's giving specific intention to a reading activity, which means you're going to be more likely to get more out of that reading activity than just reading alone. And finally, last one, like drum roll, drum roll, please. The last tip I wanted to give of things you can add to your notes is links to relevant information. So the, the lovely thing about all of your classes is that they're built on information from past classes. So for example, if you are learning about physiology, we'll just say physiology, 
and you are learning about the different cellu cellular processes in the body, well, you had to take either biology one or cell biology or something beforehand. So you're going to have a lot of relevant information from those past classes that directly impacts what's happening in this class. So going back and reviewing your past notes and importing some of those notes that are relevant into this into this class are really going to help. So maybe we're talking about uh, a, a, a transport, like a cell transport system. Well, going back to cell biology and pulling the notes on that specific transport system and then bringing them over to talk about the, the to talk about it in this class, then it's going to give you the same kind of opportunity that you had when you compared your lecture notes to your um, to your textbook notes. The information is not going to be identical. It's not going to have been prepared identical. It's not going to go into identical depth. So either your new notes are going to go into more depth, which is going to lay so shed some light on what you learned before, or what you learned before might go into more depth, which will give you some more understanding and an easier way because it'll give you foundational knowledge on what you're learning this time. So that's why it's really it's really helpful. And again, going back through past notes that you've already written, that you've already conquered, that you've already done a good job on, will give you more reference, more mental associations, and more of a foundation to lay this new information on, making it more likely that you will remember it. So that was 10 items, 10, 10 items that we talked about today.